And today we're going to be looking at something a little bit interesting. So, while I was at the electronics warehouse, I found this mystery circuit board. It has this cool face on it, and it has a chip, and it has a variety of discrete components in the back, such as potentiometers, resistors, and capacitors. I thought it would be very interesting to take a look at this circuit board, maybe figure out what it was used for, why it was built, and how it works, and maybe, if possible, we can get it running again. Let's get started. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So this is a circuit board in question, and I think this is pretty cool. So we have a chip in the middle, and then we have a wide variety of LEDs. And these LEDs kind of look like a face, and the chip kind of looks like a nose. And the whole outer ring of circuit traces look kind of like a head or a skull. Now if you think about it, these two eyes can probably flash. And if you look at the way the mouth and the eyebrows are set up, you can probably convert this between a happy and a sad face. Because if you make the eyebrows light up in this way, so that way they're pointing both inward and you make the face go down, it'll look like a frowny face or an angry face. But if you make the eyebrows point going up into the middle and you make the smiley face go like this, it'll look like a smiley face. So this chip is probably a small microcontroller that's meant to control the LEDs to do a certain thing. Now this microcontroller chip right here is probably pretty old, and judging by the look of the circuit board, the whole circuit board is quite old indeed. Uh, it was probably made quite a while ago. Now this whole thing looks homemade, especially considering the different solder connections. These solder connections on the chip definitely look like they were homemade. But still, this entire circuit board looks pretty cool. On the back, you can see that we have a variety of different potentiometers. We have five different potentiometers, and we have five different capacitors, and then we have quite an arrangement of resistors put everywhere. Now, I'm assuming that this combination of potentiometers and capacitors are in order to adjust certain timings for certain facial features. Because we, if we have five of those, Let's count how many facial features we have. We have the mouth, we have the two eyes, and then we have two eyebrows with two different expressions, and then two mouths. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or we could just count this as seven. But then again, if we look at this and we can make the eyebrows go in sync and the eyes go in sync, we have one, two, three, four, five. So that probably makes the amount of capacitors and potentiometers we have. Because you can run the eyebrows in tandem and you can run the eyes in tandem. But the mouth is a separate thing. So you have two separate uh, circuits for the mouth and then you have one circuit for one eye, for both eyes, and you have one circuit for the smiley eyebrows and one for the angry eyebrows. Let's take a look at what this chip is. All right, let's take a look at what this could possibly be. So I have it pulled up here on Google. And here's a data sheet for it. So it looks like this chip is a high performance silicon gate CMOS. So it looks like just a, a microcontroller kind of. Oh, I almost didn't see it. It's a hex Schmidt trigger inverter. So you can see that it's an inverter and you have the logic diagram with the six inverters. A Schmidt trigger circuit is a circuit where if the voltage rises above a certain point, then the tr Schmidt trigger will trigger. But if it rises below a different point, then the Schmidt trigger will go low. So this is useful for many different circuits. With our little uh, data sheet, we can see that it's a hex Schmidt trigger inverter, which means that there are six Schmidt triggers. But of course, since we only have five potentiometers and five capacitors, then we're only using five of the six Schmidt triggers. It says that this is a CMOS device, which means that it's very efficient on voltages, and it runs on a voltage of anywhere from two to six volts at uh, a low input current of one nanoamp. That's pretty cool. Basically, a Schmidt trigger inverter is if we have the uh, front part of the Schmidt trigger and it rises above a certain threshold then the output will go low and it falls below a certain threshold and the output will go high because it's an inverter. So if the input's high the output will be low. As you can see Schmidt triggers make good oscillators with this capacitor and resistor circuit. So what happens is the input is going to be low of course when it starts out which means the output's going to be high 
and then it's going to charge through this resistor, this capacitor. And once the capacitor reaches a certain threshold voltage, then the output's going to go low, and it's going to discharge the capacitor through this point. And so that is what this little triangular waveform looks like. This is the charge voltage of the capacitor. And as it passes certain thresholds, it causes the output to go high or low, so it makes a perfect little square wave circuit. So as you can see, these Schmidt trigger inverter circuits are pretty useful because you can have a lot of inverter circuits with a minimum amount of components. Because all you need is a resistor, potentiometer, a capacitor, and a Schmidt trigger. You can usually fit a lot of Schmidt triggers on one chip, such as the six Schmidt triggers on this chip. All right, without further ado, I think we should get this circuit running to see if it works. So we have a, a positive and a negative sign up here I already see. And... We have a positive, and it's next to two pins, so it's kind of hard to tell which pin it goes to. But you can see that this pin right here is VCC on one of these inverter circuits, or one of these Schmidt trigger pins. Because typically on almost any IC, the top left pin is VCC, and the bottom right pin is ground. So we can see that this pin goes all the way up to this really thick piece of wire. So this must be VCC. Then on this side, we have negative and it's next to two pins. But seeing as how this pin isn't connected to anything, uh, I think it's safe to assume that this pin right here is negative. So let's put some solder on these and connect them up to power and see what happens. I can now successfully add the power wires to the circuit via some solder. And we'll connect it up to my power supply and see what we can do. With my power supply set to a 5 volt logic level, I assume that everything should work out perfectly when I hook it up. Alright, here we go. Wish me luck. Positive connected. Ground connected in 3, 2, 1. And something looks pretty funky. Let's turn up the voltage just a little bit. Maybe turn it down. Wow. That is amazing. We've got like half the LEDs not even lighting up. Let's adjust some of the potentiometers. I have a theory that some of these LEDs are in wrong. So we're going to test that theory out by checking each of the different outputs, the different oscillators of the chip to see what happens here. I've got this one LED connected to a resistor, and this is hooked up to my power supply. And we're just going to check each of the outputs to see if that LED blinks. As you can see, when I touch positive or the positive red, the light stays on. We're going to start out by testing uh, the first output oscillator. That works. The second output oscillator. Nothing happening. The third output oscillator. Straight on. Yeah, that looks good. The fourth output oscillator. Oscillating as normal. The next one. Oscillating is normal. Oscillating is normal. You know what? I think we almost had all of them oscillating as normal. One. Yeah, we had most of them oscillating. We had all, almost all of them oscillating except two. I think that's because there's a little bit of solder touching this one. But other than that, it should be working right now. Alright, so with all the oscillators running properly inside the Schmidt trigger inverter circuit, and the outputs all blinking correctly, I think we can safely assume there's something wrong with the LEDs. Now, there were a few LEDs that were working, but I think that the rest of the LEDs weren't working because they were put in backwards. Because as you know, LEDs can only put in, be put in one direction. And looking at these LEDs, they don't have that little flat side, which lets you know which side is negative and which side is positive. So I'm assuming that the person who built this kit, because this is obviously a kit, put the LEDs in the wrong way and soldered them, and that's why it did not work. So I'm not going to try and fix this, because trying to desolder 20-something LEDs does not sound like a fun time. But anyway, this circuit board just looks cool, just the aesthetic of it. The fact that it looks like this cool red angry face and it's got this kind of skeleton like look of the solder traces around it with a little nose inside and 
I just like the fact that the circuit board, how it's made, how it's this kind of clearish circuit with these nice little silver traces. Well, anyway, although we didn't get this circuit working completely, I thought it was cool to analyze this old circuit board, this old kit that was probably made 10, 20 years ago, and just looking at how it may have worked or how all the circuit components function properly. Well, I think that's pretty cool. I were able to figure out this is a Schmidt trigger circuit and it's using a Schmidt trigger inverter to blink these different eyes and we have the five different oscillators that we can tune. It's a real shame that someone put the LEDs in backwards, but you know, that's all part of the electronics thing. I've burnt out so many circuits by putting in different chips backwards, and I can assume that the person who's building this chip was just learning about electronics, and he didn't really know that LEDs weren't supposed to go in backwards, and he just put them in the wrong way, but I think this is a cool piece of history. It's definitely going to be hung on my wall or something, just because it looks so cool. As always, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for next time.